Hey everyone, Evelina Demora here. How are you guys going? Today I'm going to talk about the fact that I am in one of my favorite magazines, Gothic and Amazing. What an honor. So I'm just going to show you the interview and talk a little bit about how this came about. Yeah, so exciting. So there's a cool interview in here with Moonspell. As well as Eileen, who if you're in you know the goth scene, I'm sure you've seen her face pop up. She's absolutely gorgeous and everywhere. <laughs> and what I really like about the goth subculture is how easy it is to make new friends. So this lovely lady here, when she got her copy, she tagged me in it. And I, I, I hope I pronounced her name correctly, Nemi. Yeah, but she's just lovely as well. So I consider her a new friend. Okay, so my interview starts on page 36. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Although I look so much whiter. <laughs> in that photo <laughs> than I do right now. Have to edit the video. Yeah, and it's quite a few pages. It's crazy. I took a really long time doing this interview. Um, but yeah, it's about my bags and just like what I've been doing and recent collabs and stuff. That's a photo shoot I took with Riri. Um, that's my album cover. So that's already like four or five pages so far. So yeah, super, super honored to be in this magazine. And I love if you guys haven't seen my gothic wedding, check out my dress. I've been saying forever that I want to do some kind of video where I see if I can still fit in my wedding dress. I think that would be fun. Oh, it's super hot today. I want to pin up my hair. So I thought I just might read you one or two of the questions. I don't want to read all of them to you because obviously you can purchase. Um, I think the digital download is... Oh shit, it's either free or it's like $5 or something. It's really cheap or you can get a really nice um, hard copy, you know, to, to keep and read. And I'm a bit nostalgic with this kind of stuff, but I, I like printouts that I can have in my hands. I've never really gotten used to the like digital ebook thing. I, I just, maybe I'm showing my age. I just can't do it. It feels wrong. Oh, okay, I'm going to pin this up. Whew, okay, that feels better. All right, so I'm just going to randomly pick one of these questions. How many tattoos do you have and when was the first one that you got? Hmm, and this is my reply. <laughs> it's hard to count them all actually as I have a half sleeve that would be on this arm here which you can't see through the mesh as well as a few others here and there but let's just say I've endured quite a lot of pain and then I'm also long overdue for some new ink that is so true oh my god I actually got my first tattoo when I was 18 and it's the hibiscus that resides on my right breast this one here I always call it a rose I don't know why I do that <laughs> uh, and that was a birthday present from my not then but now husband Von I also got all of my tattoos very quickly in the space of about six months great I actually wished I had a slow down a little as during the course of the next five years of my life I kind of underwent some dramatic stylistic changes yeah from punk to goth <laughs> and started to venture more and more into the goth lifestyle the content of my tattoos is not what I would select today they're not for starters I would probably go with all black and white tattoos and I've gone with different artworks that represent who I am now not who I was 15 years ago it's so true <laughs> but having said that everything I wear is black so my tattoos are a nice splash of color in amongst all the dark oh my god yes this is like I wrote it <laughs> I did bad joke so yeah that's one of them I know a lot of you ask me about my tattoos and stuff Oh, this is a fun one. Okay. What is the process of designing a bag? Is it hard to combine your brand with someone else's aesthetic and end up with a design you both like? <laughs> Good question. The process is, I don't know if you need to see that. No. The process is pretty similar to writing a song actually in that if the ideas are there, the song usually flows and falls into place relatively quickly. And I do enjoy this initial process of getting the ideas out of my head and down on paper the most. So true for both songwriting and bag designing. The design element is by far the most enjoyable process. I fucking hate all the other shit. <laughs> and just like where the song can come together very quickly or take a little bit of time to develop into something I like. After, I've, uh, after I have completed a design, I then show it to my collaborator. <laughs> Another fun part. Some girls love the bags exactly as they are and are happy to move forward with my vision for their bag. And others like to get a little more involved and contribute more. 
I'm completely fine with both scenarios and have found each circumstance to yield good results. Also so true. For example, Drag Macon sent me a pencil sketch of a baby bat that she drew up for our bag and I redrew this sketch in Photoshop to make the line work consistent with my existing artwork. And together we came up with something very unique which we are both very proud of. I've got to show you the Drag Macon's black bag sample in a second. Remind me to go back there. <laughs> so far I haven't found it difficult at all to turn one of my girl's aesthetics into a bag. I mean, some have been a little more challenging than others, but comments I often receive on my YouTube videos from you guys, Facebook or Instagram, is how well I capture the girls within each design and the page. I am very proud of this. <laughs> I felt like there was going to be a lot more, but that's it. But yeah, there's, there's way more questions and you guys should totally check it out. Read it. Buy it. Both. Yeah. And again, thank you to Gothic and Amazing for putting me in the magazine. Yeah. <sighs> I'm gonna die when I'm on their Instagram page. It will happen. It will happen at some point soon. I'm sending the vibes out there. <laughs> okay, let's let's talk about some other stuff. So, I have something very exciting to show you. It is indeed the black Drag Megan's bag, but they printed the artwork how do I say this? I, I inverted it for the black version because it's not, if anyone knows about like printing t-shirts, it's not as simple as just changing it from black to white for it to work on different colors. And that's what my company did. So this is a one of a kind drag makings a black version of the bag. So it's, you'll probably have to stare at it for a while, but I, I saw it straight away. But see how it's kind of just hard to understand that's because it's it's in, it should be inverted <laughs> um, so the bat is actually black and the the vamp is silver so on the proper one it's the other way around and you'll see that it just it kind of just makes more sense but this is very unique again there's nothing wrong with it it's just the only one out of well we had 200 made so this is the sample so 201 that's like this so if anyone would like to buy this one it'll be the same price because again it's it's perfect. <laughs> um, it's just super duper unique. <laughs> and I have it now. So like if you don't want to wait until the other ones are in stock. Um, yeah, you can have this now. And I did make the some changes to the strap stupidly. I didn't bring it in with me when I'm filming. But what I love about this is that you can, there's three ways to use it. You can just like hold it as a clutch, which we can't see because the camera is too low. <laughs> don't worry like that. Yeah, put your shoulders back. So you can just hold it like a clutch, which looks super elegant. What I did with the strap is I made it adjustable through way of removing the chain. So you can either wear it as like an uh, under a shorter underarm bag where the spike strap comes over here. So it's easier to actually show you. Or you can wear it full length like a crossbody bag way down next to your hip is what I mean. So it's super versatile and I think all of the new bags um, will incorporate that because it's just, it's handy because I don't know how you girls want to wear the bags. and. I just, I like having options. Another very exciting one I want to preview that I've been working on forever, it seems, is Lurid Fox's bag. Look at that. It's so shiny. I find it hard to actually show you, but look, look, look. <gasps> Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I'm loving that. Oh, and the interior. Oh, it's filled with. <laughs> I should have taken that out first, but yeah, we've got our mirror and it's baby pink inside. So yeah, a little sneak peek of that. What's really cool is I've had this little steel logo made to put on the back of my bags. And of course, it's spiked, but the, I will do a video, of course, on the release of this bag. But the beautiful thing about this one is that it's really adjustable, like you can double it up like that and wear it shorter. You can triple it up or quadruple it up and make it really short and just sit it like under your arm like that. Or you can totally release the chain and make it long. Again, I'm putting a lot of thought into the versatility of these bags. And can we just talk about this top for a second? I was saying in one of my last videos that I wanted a really tight mesh shirt, but one that had winged sleeves. And I have it. This was from Misguided. I had to buy it twice. Like they refunded me the first time because the first time I bought it, it just didn't arrive. It got lost out in cyberspace or whatever. <laughs> and then they said, yeah, it's out of stock. And then I went to their website. I'm like, no, it's not. Well, they re-put it on their website, like $5 dearer or something. <laughs> so I, I'm like, I really want that top. So I re-bought it. And yeah, 
Now I'm wearing it. Yep, look at that. Killstar, you naughty, naughty people. I've lost an earring, haven't I? Awesome, didn't even notice. So yeah, I'm gonna have to contact them. One of the, uh, like these massive sword earrings fell out of the loop, so easily fixed, not a problem. But yeah, this necklace is Killstar. Some other really exciting news is that my manufacturer is already making the Black Friday wallet. Now, I have been on Instagram pretty vocal and saying I'm not sure if it will fit in the clutch because I want to make decent size, like normal wallets and they're, they're you know, a normal size. And a clutch isn't really supposed to fit a wallet, so <laughs> it might fit, it might not, but that's fine because I am also working on a fully blown larger handbag for Freya and it's already been designed. Again, that's the fun part now. I just have to get all the specs to my manufacturer so they can make it, but the wallet will definitely fit in that. So that's super exciting. I've also finished my coffin wallet for Death Candy. The interior for hers is going to be hot pink. Oh, so cool. <laughs> And I hope to have all of these out before the end of the year. You know, I've tried two manufacturers. One didn't go very well. The other one's starting to get the shits with me because apparently I'm too fussy. Um, so it looks like I might have to go back to, to the first one and have samples that the other companies like remade basically. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I'm really hoping to get the Goblin Queens, Lurid Fox, definitely the Black Friday wallets will be released before the end of the year. My half soons will all be available for pre-order, not in stock. You know, that takes a few months. The Drag Makin's handbags were sent to me today, so that's very exciting. I just hope they don't get stuck in customs. And in five days time, on the 15th, the Black Friday order should be shipped to me. So yeah, it won't be long until you all start to receive your shipment notifications. And that is the fun part. I cannot wait to see you all with them. I mean, <laughs> there's like 350 bags that I have to send out between Drag Makin's and It's Black Friday. Um, yeah, it's gonna be like a mad social media explosion. I cannot wait to see how you all style them. And yeah, that's really exciting. Oh, are you a little kitty cat? Mm -hmm. Do you wanna come over and say hi? Okay. It's nine o'clock at night, yeah. still, still up. Do you need to go potty? Meow. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, we have a munchkin. I can Whoops. see you. I can see you. Let's lower the camera so everybody can see how beautiful you are. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wheels on the bus. Go round and round. Wheels on the bus. Go round and round. Round and round. round. That's it. Hand actions. Round and round. The wheels, wheels on the bus. Go round. Round, 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 really super duper fast. Round, round, round. Wheels on the bus go round and round. Do it super fast. Wheels on the bus round and round, round and round, round and round. Wheels on the bus go round and round over the town. Very slow. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. Wheels on the bus go round and round over the town. Do you love me? Mhm. I love you. All right, say bye YouTube, it's my bedtime. Bye YouTube, it's my bedtime. Yeah, I gotta get some sleep. <laughs> All right, it's my bedtime too, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. I think it looks like Auntie Freya, but in a bag? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so do I. <laughs> So spiky, huh? Hey? He got spikes on the top. Uh huh. What's this rat? Well, that's the sigil of Lucifer, sweetie. It's come Halloween. <laughs> yeah. What's this yeah, rat? Come Halloween. Oh, you're funny. What's no. this rat? So that's the issue of Gothic and Amazing that Mummy's in. One, two, two three, three, four, five. Seven. Try again. From the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay. There's six spikes. One, two, three.